On the 21st of May 2005, The Empty Child first broadcast on BBC One. It was a ninth episode of the revived series of Doctor Who and the first of a two-parter by Stephen Moffat. Plus, it introduced Captain Jack Harkness to the Doctor Who universe. It was also my first ever episode of Doctor Who. I came across a repeat of it one Sunday afternoon in 2005. I was 13 years old and I had never seen anything like it before. I'm celebrating 10 years of being a Doctor Who fan by revisiting this two-parter and sharing some of my thoughts with you. There will be spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen it yet, go and watch it now. And for the rest of you, here's what I think about this fantastic two-parter. World War II is a great setting for a scary story. Not only is the already spooky gas mask turned into something even more chilling in this episode, it's all set in the darkness of wartime London. This episode has a very authentic wartime atmosphere. The streets are low lit and we can hear the rumble of bombs faintly in the background. The blue and black tones make this scene feel damp and cold. It's very dark and sometimes it's quite hard to see the characters. However, during an air raid, there wouldn't have been much light, so this feels very realistic. It's very spooky too, and you just don't know who or what is lurking in the shadows. The CGI in this episode stands the test of time. We're thrown straight into action in the pre-title sequence of The Empty Child, with the TARDIS hurtling through space. Inside, the Ninth Doctor and Rose chase a metallic object through the time vortex and arrive in London during the Blitz. There are also several great CGI shots of the burning London skyline around St Paul's, later on when Rose is seen hanging on the end of a rope attached to a blimp. It's perfectly believable and the fantastic CGI by the mill still looks great today. The Empty Child is a terrifying episode and still scares me today. This is because Stephen Moffat turned something innocent, a child, into something very scary. Evil children are sinister enough, but getting it to use a phrase so familiar to us such as mummy is just horrible. And then you've got the gas mask with the hollow round emotionless eyes like the Cybermen. This episode is a little bit different as the Doctor dominates the screen. It really gives Christopher Eggerson a chance to shine as a ninth Doctor and watching this episode really reminds me why he's greatly missed. The Ninth Doctor is often considered to be the darker Doctor, but there are plenty of moments in this two-parter where he shows wit, goofiness, compassion, determination and eventually joy. For eight episodes now we've learned about the Doctor through Rose. Here we learn about him through how he relates to Nancy. He recognises that she's lost someone and looks after people because of that. Obviously he sees it in her because he's lost his people. He also recognises her hardship of being a child all alone. The Doctor's past and childhood is a subject not covered much in Doctor Who in the classic series, but one that is addressed much more post-2005. A decision I think Russell T Davis made in order to make the character of the Doctor more interesting and relatable. Russell T Davis only had one series to prove Doctor Who could come back for good and he wasn't going to waste it. He needed to create characters that the audience could connect to and watch them grow by giving them a compelling journey to go through. The invention of the Time War is genius. The Doctor loses all of his people and has to rebuild himself in the aftermath during the course of the first series. This is not only to make this character interesting for new audiences, but also existing audiences. This man is not the same as we left him after the TV movie. As someone discovering Who for the first time, the Doctor being the last of his kind was one of the selling points of Doctor Who for me. Whilst the Doctor investigates the mystery of the empty child, Rose is swept up by the charming Captain Jack Harkness. This is John Barrowman's first appearance as a time agent and would become a returning character in Doctor Who and later star in his own spin-off Torchwood. In contrast to the Doctor, Jack is more of a conventional action hero. He's outwardly flirtatious and Rose even says he's like the Doctor except with dating and dancing. Captain Jack did eventually become one of my favourite characters in Doctor Who but he started out as a very different person. Rose meets him after climbing up a rope at the start of the episode to reach Jamie. It starts moving as it's on the end of a blimp and she's carried away. She is spotted, or should I say her excellent bottom is spotted by the flirtatious Jack who comes to rescue her. Rose flirts with him back a lot. Poor Mickey. Jack thinks she's a time agent and tries to get her to buy the object he brought to Earth by saying it's a rare Tula warship. It's actually junk and he wants to grab the money before a bomb destroys it in two hours. This is a younger, naughtier, more reckless Jack. He hasn't travelled with the Doctor yet and he's still mortal. It's long before Torchwood too, so he hasn't been through all the challenges that grow and mature him. We're not sure how to take him at first because he's a con man, especially when we eventually learn the object is responsible for the virus. However, 
He redeems himself at the end of the episode when Captain Jack stops the bomb from falling and takes it to outer space with his ship to detonate. The Doctor, impressed by his willingness to sacrifice himself, saves him just in time and offers him a spot on board the TARDIS. The Doctor finds out Jack's object is responsible for the virus when he meets Dr Constantine at an abandoned hospital. It's full of people just like Jamie with a mark on their hand and gas masks fused to their faces but they lay lifeless on the beds. What's even more chilling is we find out the gas masks are made from bone and flesh and are fused to the faces of the victims. Which brings me onto what is for me the definitive scene of The Empty Child. Yes, that scene. If you haven't guessed it yet, I'm talking about the scene where Dr Constantine is claimed by the virus and we witness the gas mask emerging from his mouth and eyes and takes over his face. He begins choking and spluttering and starts murmuring, mummy. He turns bright red and the gas mask begins forcing its way up his throat and his eyes become lifeless circles. We hear the cracking of bones and what sounds like twisting rubber. The camera lingers on him for a disturbing amount of time and it's so uncomfortable to watch. I don't think there has been a scene in Doctor Who as scary since. I still can't really watch it all the way through today without looking away at least once. Rose and Jack arrive at the hospital but find themselves surrounded by the infected people. Meanwhile at the house, Nancy is cornered by Jamie. It's an epic cliffhanger. In the Doctor dances, the Doctor stops the infected people by telling them to go to their room. They head to the crash site of the object. Nancy reaches the crash site too, and it's eventually revealed that Jamie isn't Nancy's brother, but her son. Nancy tells him that she's his mummy, and they hug. The nanogenes scan their DNA and because of the genetic match, restore Jamie back to full health. The doctor then fiddles with the nanogenes and hurls them towards the other infected people who turn back to normal. For once, everybody lives. It's a big moment for the ninth doctor. Nobody dies and he's ecstatic. So ecstatic, he dances something he avoids earlier because he's trying to resonate concrete. It's almost as if he's been released from his post-time war trauma, or some of it at least, and saving everyone has made up for every death weighing down his conscience. In summary, this two-parter is basically freaking scary. I don't think there's been an episode quite as scary since. Blink comes close, but the graphic nature of the scene where the gas mask engulfs Mr Constantine's face puts it at the top of my list of most terrifying Doctor Who episodes. The two-parter allows for these stories to unfold slowly. We piece together information from the Doctor and Nancy and Jack and Rose. Cutting between the characters keeps us gripped and builds tension that makes moments such as Mr Constantine's scene much more terrifying and impactful. The Emmys Child was a great episode to join Doctor Who on age 13, not only because it was so terrifying, but this episode really gives the ninth Doctor a chance to shine on his own. Whilst other episodes may have stirred my curiosity, they may not have grabbed me in the same way as The Emmys Child did. Be a pal and tell me, am I a good man? I don't know who the Doctor is anymore. <laughs> Be a pal and tell me, am I a good man? <laughs>